Hey guys, just wanted to pop on here really quick and tell you about the last few weeks of me using the 50 millimeter F1 lens. It's fabulous. Um, I'm here just to share my experiences. So of course, take it with, you know, a grain of salt, take it with whatever. Um, these are my experiences. These are my opinions. Uh, if you have different opinions or experiences, please feel free to share them in the comments down below because I'm definitely interested to hear what you guys think of this lens. Now, I did shoot um, some video footage um, about a month ago when I first rented this lens. Uh, I really wanted to rent this lens before a wedding just so that I could see what this lens could do. I've heard so much about it over the years that I was super interested in it. So, um, that being said, uh, I rented the lens from Bedford's here in Oklahoma City right before a wedding, and I knew that I was going to have a full weekend that weekend. So I had a wedding on Saturday, and then I had a senior session on Sunday. This lens was way heavier than I expected. Now, the footage I initially shot for this uh, was me going to the camera store to rent the lens. I was going to take you with me. I thought it would be fun to do a, hey, come with me and pick up this cool new lens video. It never panned out. I was having some issues with my video camera and I had it set to 4K video. So it was constantly focusing on me and then focusing on the background. And I didn't realize that until I started reviewing the footage. And then I thought, okay, I can't share this because it's awful and the blur and the continuous focusing between me and the background is way too distracting and you guys aren't going to want to see that. So I basically canned that video. So all the footage I had of my experiences and all this other stuff was a total waste and I'm sorry about that. Um, but I know what I did wrong with this video camera here and that will never happen again. Getting back to this lens. Um, in comparing it to a lot of the other lenses that I have in my wedding kit, it is different than anything I own. And the reason why I say this is because, first of all, this lens is tremendous, okay? This lens, not only does it weigh a lot, but the size of it is just huge. You are better off using this on your X-T2, 3, 4, whatever you have, with a battery grip because the battery grip will help balance the weight of this lens. I used it on the wedding that I had with no battery grip. I recently got a grip for my spare camera. So um, I had the X-T2 and X-T3 side by side on my holster that I use for weddings, recently upgraded to another X-T3. I hadn't yet got the battery grip for that camera yet, so I put this on the body with no grip, and it was very awkward. This is very front heavy, so any little tiny body that you have attached to the end of this lens, it's going to want to go like this. It's a mess. Anyway, recently got a grip for the extra body. It balances it out way better. There is a ton of weight to this lens. It is way heavier than I thought it was going to be. I mean, I wasn't, I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't, it wasn't, the weight that I thought was going to be so crazy about this lens. Um, I could expect that from something like a 50 to 140, you know, like where it's just, it's long, so it's heavy. This, it's not as long of a lens, you know, in measurement wise, but the weight of it is just, it's just crazy. So I'm going to do a little comparison. This, and I hope it comes into focus, this is my 90 right here, okay? This is the 50 F1. And look at the difference. They're almost about the same height, okay? But the width of this lens, I mean, it's just so much bigger. You'll see. Now, this is the 56, and it's nearly half the size of this lens, okay? And it's tremendous. So, it is definitely a bigger size lens. Once you get past the size and the weight of it, the pictures are beautiful. So I had, and I'm going to be posting them as I'm talking, so you'll be seeing pictures pop up as you're hearing this video. Um, but it, there was a slight learning curve, I'm not going to lie. And 
I know you're probably thinking, well, it's a 50. How is there a learning curve? You stick it on your lens and you shoot. Yes, but um, I did notice, and maybe it's just this copy. I don't know. But I did notice that you can't shoot everything at f1, okay? No matter what lens you own, whether it's the 23 1.4, you're not going to be able to shoot everything at 1.4. Even the 16, you're not going to be able to shoot everything at 1.4. Um, same with any lens. The, you know, this lens, my 90 F2, you're not going to be able to shoot everything at F2. And I realize that, okay? But the point of rent renting this lens was because I really wanted to try it out. I wanted to see what does F1 give you? What does it do for you? What are the benefits to having such an open aperture? The pros to this lens are, depending on your distance, this is tack sharp. I mean, it, it is amazingly sharp. Again, you're not going to be able to shoot everything at F1. So if you are close to someone, naturally, you're going to get this thin band of focus. Um, if you're shooting detail shots, for example, you're going to want to stop down to F, you know, probably 5.6 or even 6.3, just so that you get more of image in focus. I noticed when I was shooting um, just a crowd of people, it was just a very general picture. I knew it was a photo that I could easily get another copy of with another lens if I had to. So um, sort of experimenting in the situation that I was in, I knew that it wasn't going to be an important image to the bride. And I noticed that in shooting into a crowd of people where there is a lot of backlight, like for example, if we're inside the venue and they're standing in front of the entrance door and there's like, you know, a lot of light behind them, it didn't do so great focusing. Now, in the camera, it looked like I had focused on them. It looked like I had locked focus. But when I pulled the image up in Lightroom, I noticed that the image was soft or it was very blurry. So... I mean, I, there were some images, images where I knew, okay, yeah, I didn't get that. It's not sharp, whatever. Then there were other images where I really felt like I had gotten the shot. And I'll probably still give it to the bride anyway, but it was definitely not as tack sharp as I would have liked. It was soft, but still acceptable. And I'll try and share some of those images on this YouTube video as well. Overall, it is a great lens. It is a very hefty investment. Right now, here in Oklahoma, they are going for about $1,550. That's $1,550 US dollars. Um, I don't know where, you know, in the world, if it's a cheaper price. Uh, I ended up getting this copy, though. You can get them from KEH Camera. The copy that I got was $1,200. So... Very expensive still, not as expensive as buying it brand new. Now, from KEH Camera, I did get this. I mean, it looks brand new. There's no scratches. There's no scuff marks. There's no wear. I mean, it looks like, I mean, it looks brand new. It came with the lens caps, front and back, and the hood. It also came with some paperwork. So, I mean, I felt like I was buying a new lens. Um, that being said, it is a hef hefty investment. I definitely recommend renting this lens before purchasing. So I did rent this lens from Bedford Camera for $100 for three days. I got a chance to really try it out. Um, I felt that it would be worthy enough of an investment for me to go ahead and purchase it. So I did. Uh, I'm still getting used to the lens. I know that this is going to be a lens that is good for me and good for the clients because I know I'm going to be able to get a lot of good stuff with it. But again, it is also a learning curve. Um, there are going to be very rare chances that I'll be able to use this lens at F1. Um... It, it just, it's so touchy at F1, so I would feel way more comfortable using it at 2.8 or, you know, 3.2 or, I mean, just a more, you know, a more tighter aperture. It, it's just, I don't think I'm ready for F1 yet, honestly. 
Uh, and I don't think the brides are either. With group shots, definitely, it's got to be, you got to be at like five, six. And you have to make sure that you're far enough away from the group that everyone is going to be in focus. You know, you got to make sure everyone's on the same plane and in focus. So normally for group shots, I'm using the 23 millimeter anyway. So the instances where I did use this lens on the wedding was for the ceremony part. Typically, I would use the 50 to 140 or even the 90 but I really wanted to put this to the test. So I used it during the ceremony. Uh, it was pretty awesome. The sun was setting, it was getting darker. It was already 7.30 in the evening, so we were still outside. Uh, I did shoot a lot of the images at F1. They came out tack sharp. I was at a far enough away distance that F1 made sense. So don't forget, if you're right on someone, you're not gonna be able to do this at F1. If you're far enough back, you will be able to get them in focus and tack sharp. So that was really fun. The bridal shots that I did after the ceremony, when it was just the couple themselves, it performed amazing. I would say it's definitely worth the investment. Um, for instances like the reception where I'm indoors, I'm using off-camera flash, I'm not going to be using this lens. I'm going to be using probably the 23 or the 16. Now this particular venue has a very small dance floor, so you're literally backed up against the wall. You're going to want to use a wide, fast lens. Something like this is not going to work. I wouldn't even recommend this for the exit photos. Now, again, this is my opinion. A lot of you probably would use this for sparkler exit photos. I know John Branch uses this lens for his exit photos. I myself like a wider lens because I typically find myself really close to the couple and I want to get all of the people surrounding them and I want to get them as they're coming out. Those images are really important to me to shoot wide. I want to show everything that's going on. If I use a lens like this, it's more focused on just the couple and maybe a a few people surrounding them and I don't really want that look. I want the couple to see who was there, who was celebrating. I want them to have a feeling for the moment and all of the love and all of the people surrounding them. So to me, a wider, faster lens works better for exit shots. I'm definitely interested to hear what you guys think. Um, I'm very excited about this lens. So the other thing that I was really excited about was changing gears completely. We recently upgraded our mag spheres, and if you hadn't noticed yet on the MagMod website, they have upgraded everything to like the MagSphere 2, the MagGrip 2. So it's the second version of the original product. Now this is 50% lighter, um, it's thinner, it's, you can definitely feel the weight difference. Um, the weight of this is not gonna make your lens flop forward like the original. It's a lot of the reason why I never use the mag sphere with my flash because anytime I put it on my camera, the weight of the original mag sphere would literally make my, my flash move forward all on its own. So it was very difficult and frustrating to use a piece of equipment that was so heavy. The idea behind it's great and it produced amazing images and light and everything else, but it was just really heavy and bulky. So. It's about the same size as the other, as the original Mag Sphere. It's just way lighter. And the Mag Grips are also way lighter. Same strength with the magnets, but just a lot lighter, a lot more user friendly. Um, and then we also upgraded our flashes to the, and I'm sorry if it's taking a second to get in focus, the V863s, okay? And I'm also really excited about that too because this is going to allow me to trigger my Godox 8200s on the dance floor with just my flash. I'm not gonna have to use a trigger and a flash anymore. Now that I've upgraded to this, I can use this to trigger the other lights on the dance floor. So I'm super excited about that. So there have been a lot of awesome changes this month as far as equipment upgrades and stuff. I don't really upgrade my equipment a lot um, but when I see something that I think could make my job easier, make the pictures beautiful and better, I'm going to go for it. So this will probably be the last of my upgrades for a while. You've probably heard me say that before, but all these people keep coming out with awesome stuff and I can't help myself. So I don't really find myself, um, I don't really see the need to have to upgrade probably um, more after this. I mean, this was a pretty big purchase, so... I'm gonna have to like spend some time 
you know, my, my check account needs like a, a break after this. So, uh, that's all folks. Um, comment down below on some other videos. I'm trying to put them out at least once a month. Um, my life here has been pretty busy lately. Wedding season is ramping up again. Um, so, you know, I've got a lot going on at the moment, but I definitely want to hear from you on what you would like to hear from me. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. I appreciate all the new subscribers. I'm glad you're enjoying the content. Again, it's just all my opinion. Uh, and sometimes I'm kind of surprised that you guys want to hear that. But uh, this lens and the new flash and the new Magmod equipment, that's all I've got for the month of April. I'm really excited about both of them. And I hope you guys have a wonderful week and tune in next month for another awesome video. Talk to you soon.